Good evening, everybody, or actually good night, I should say. It's, it's uh, eight minutes to midnight here on Thursday, December 17th, 2020, uh, in South San Francisco, California. I was actually just laying in bed trying to go to sleep, and I couldn't fall asleep, and I got up to, I, I remember that I had to get the mail, and I had to put the trash out, so I, I did that, and came back in, and I thought I'd have a cup of tea, so I made a cup of tea, or tisane, 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 all right, <laughs> and, um, so that's brewing, and I thought I would do a video, and I, I haven't talked much about my relapse yet, and, uh, and what I did during that relapse, and I haven't talked at all about Coulter. Um, so, you know, I'll try to cover maybe, maybe some of those things. Um, I have been doing well since my relapse, um, which was last, was that last Wednesday, I think, about a week ago. Um, what I did with my relapse, well, I hung out with a friend of mine and I listened to him chatter incessantly, and it was kind of like, okay. And, but I was having a very, very good time because I had not seen this particular friend in a very long time, and I was very, very happy to see him. Um, his mood was a little, you know, his mood was okay. I was gonna say it was a little bit strange, but he was all right. Um, and we had sex, not full on anal sex, but we, you know, fucked around. We had sort of like, you know, I gave him a blowjob, is what I did, all right? Um, and after that, we hung out, we just hung out. Um, I, for, for a while he was doing, because sometimes he tends to get high and then just ramble on these like, you know, things that don't really make any sense, so I just tune out. Honestly, I don't, I'm not going to subject myself to that. So, but I wasn't holding it against him. Um, so I just uh, picked up the Bible and started reading it out loud. And the reason I did that is because I was I was in my bedroom. We didn't do drugs here. We came back here after we had done drugs. Um, and. I went in my bedroom and I, uh, you know, cause I, I was feeling like a little bit like, just kind of like when your head gets like, uh, uh, uh. so I figured number one, if I go and I read the Bible and I read out loud, it kind of brings you back to like, here is a, you know, bring kind of put your feet back on the ground again a little bit. Cause I was just tired of listening to his, his stuff. I love him to death. I really do. And I'm not going to mention his name. I have talked about him on, on Facebook before and in videos. But I'm not going to mention his name. Um, but it was gr it was great to see him. I will say that I missed him a lot. Missed him a lot. Anyway, so um, so I go in my bedroom and I pick up my Bible and I start reading Acts right from the beginning of Acts. You know, and I, this is only I don't even I, now I was in the state of mind where where I was reading was going right out of my head after I was reading it, and I knew that because that's going to happen sometimes when you're high. Absolutely. The point was to kind of just ground myself again and just sort of quiet myself and stuff like that. And it does that. It does that. So I did that for like, like I don't know, I read up to like maybe chapter two of Acts, I think it was. It was very short. And then I came out here and I played the piano uh, in my headphones for a little bit. Because uh, this was late at night. This was now by probably like, I don't know. 2 a.m., somewhere around there. Um, and so I came out and I played the piano, and then my friend said, you know, hey, I'm gonna take off, and I said, okay, well, it was very good to see you, and he left. Um, it's funny, because I told him, during the time we hung out, that
Well, actually, no, I, I texted him later and I said, you know, the thing I loved most about us hanging out was getting to give you that hug. Because I asked him if I could give him a hug at some point. I said, can I give you a hug? Is that all right? And, you know, he said, sure, yeah. And I gave him this hug and I, I reached around and I, you know, that kind of hug where you kind of hold on for like a little bit extra, you know, a little bit for a minute. And I did that, you know, and I said that, I said, I, I can't remember when I said this to him, but I said, um, I've been waiting to give you that hug for, for three years. Three years it's been, you know. And to this day, honestly, that, the thing I remember most about that night was being able to give him that hug, and that was very, very good. But it also reminded me of how I don't miss that scene, you know, and I don't really miss the attitudes of the people in that scene. Um, It's just a whole different world of, of people that don't like themselves, don't care about themselves, and really don't care about other people either. And that's not me. It never has been me, even when I was in it. You know what I mean? But at one time, it seemed like it was like a little bit different. It didn't seem, you know, when I, I remember when I was in the drug scene when I was a lot younger, uh, it just seemed very... It was just different. It was different. I don't, you know, and it wasn't just me that was different. Of course, I was different too, because we all change as we age, but it was a different scene. It was, and I don't know why, but it just was, you know. Um, so, so it's been like a week now since my relapse, and I'm doing all right. I'm looking forward to Christmas. I am. Always on Christmas Day, it seems like there's always something beautiful about the sky to me. You know what I mean? Whether it be a gray sky or whether it be like a bright sunny day or whether, it doesn't seem to really matter. It just seems like there's something very just appreciable about the sky on Christmas Day. This is like a, a honey lemon, honey lemon uh, chamomile tea, I think, and it's nice. It is really nice. It is really nice. So though, anyway, now about my friend there, you know, as much as I love him to death and I really do care about him, and I pray for him all the time. Um, you know, it made me realize that I need to, like, not talk to him anymore, though. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, to keep my distance, in other words. You know? Um, because it's not good for my sobriety, in other words. You know, and I, I you know, it's, uh... little complex all this but um, actually and that's a <laughs> you know I think that's probably the best I can say to someone up honestly is because I'm sure your situations in life too are very much like that they're very very complex you know there's a lot of stuff to them but I try to keep things simple you know so that's what I'm gonna try to do is kind of just give him his space you know, pray from a distance like I've been doing and try to take care of myself and um, post relapse, you know, as soon as you can get back into it for me, you know, I needed to kind of like stay in bed for like a day or two there. Um, but, you know, as soon as I can get back up, I like to get back to the things that I enjoy. And, you know, and I've done that with the good Lord willing because that's that's really what it comes down to is that I don't do control anything I don't do anything it's uh, it's all up to God 
it's all up to God. Now, colder, I don't really know what to say about that. Um, I mean, nothing's coming to mind right now, even though I have a bunch of stuff I could say about it. That's what I mean, is that nothing's coming to mind right now. Um, I just, I guess what I can say is this, is that, is that, is that the Lord asked me to sort of put my heart and soul into the mindset of us get, of being engaged and getting married, and I did that with one leg out, going, you know, this may not happen, and if it doesn't, you know. And what, all I can really say is that I'm maximizing that one leg out that I've had now, and that has saved my ass. Because, you know, um, you know, because part of me was just kind of like, well, you know, I've only met this guy like three times, and like, you know, yeah, if he's like you say he is, then absolutely. And I'm willing to even go on that basis. I'm willing to even like, you know, act as though. Um, and I did that. And I, and I didn't do it insincerely either. I mean, I gave, you know, I was myself and I gave myself to it. Um, but I didn't, you know, but I didn't completely just forget reality at the same time. You know what I mean? So... And that kind of allows me to sit here right now and be like, okay, good, you know. And near the end, I have to say, I mean, I even sent Coulter several text messages to the effect of, like, this is really irritating me that I kind of want to out of this because, you know, it's like, it is against my will. I am participating in this against my will, really. I mean, because if it were up to, because I don't typically, that's not the way I do shit. You know what I mean? I don't do things like that, like flights of fancy that way. It's just not typical of me. So... I kind of didn't want to do it, but I was like, you know, at the same time, I can see a sort of a spiritual exercise in that, you know what I mean? Several different things can come of it. And so like, since I didn't have a choice anyway, you know what I mean? When you're stuck in a situation where you got to do it anyway, and you can at least see some of the benefits of doing it. So you're like, well, all right. You know what I mean? I'm going to like not fight this. I'm going to like engage it as I should. And that things will go the best that they should. And, and they did they did, even though it didn't turn out in the way that, you know, was stated. I feel like I'm not satisfied with my explanation of this. I feel like I'm being too cryptic. I mean, I understand it, but it's a matter of getting the, you know, conveying it. And that's kind of, I'm having a tough time doing that right now. Um, I assume that that means that all will come out in time and that now is not supposed to be the time for me to explain it. So, um, so there's that. This robe, by the way, is killer. I love this robe. I wear it quite a bit. You see, colder, colder, colder. Um, Wait, there's definitely going to be more to say on this. There's definitely, because I'm not going to leave something, honestly, you know, just even though I could do it, um, for the for, for people that are paying attention, I feel like people need more explanation. So I'm not going to leave it just completely, just never go back to it. Because I think people need, I want people to understand exactly what happened with that, you know, in my mind, as far as, I, that's very important to me. Um, but I just can't think of the word, you know, I just, nothing comes to, I'm not moved right now to explain it, so I guess I'm just not going to, uh, beyond what I've said, but, um, I mean, it's the kind of thing, like, if somebody came out and asked me questions right now, I probably would, be, I'm totally willing to, like, respond to a question or whatever, but, um, but as far as, like, me thinking of things to say off the cuff about it right now, I'm just having a little bit of difficulty with that, um, Hopefully this tea will help knock me out a little bit. I tried to, um, I have some sleepy time tea that I've had for a couple months that I have a bag of occasionally. 
And it's okay, but like, I don't really like it. It's not a flavor that I really dig, you know? So, I guess that's why it's lasted, which, you know, it's kind of like what I was thinking about Jell-O not that, not that long ago. It's one of the nice things about Jell-O is that it's not cake, you know? And it, what makes it so good is that uh, you're not moved to eat it all at once like you would be with cake. You don't sit down, you know, with a cake. Like, a cake lasts me like one or two days. Like, I literally plow through a cake like that. Like, <laughs> cake does not last with me. I think it probably does with most people, though, right? I mean, it's kind of one of those things. But Jell-O, man, that Jell-O sat in my refrigerator before I finished it for, like, a week. You know, because it's like, it was good, but it wasn't like, oh, my God, this Jell-O. I have to keep eating that like I would with cake. It was just kind of like, yeah, it's good. You know, I have, like, a little, like, thing, and then I'm like, all right. I, you know, I'm not really moved to eat any more of that. So, you know. I'm just looking out the window. It's not really entertaining to watch right now. Actually, I should probably, I don't know if I should do this video or, or not really, because I don't really have anything to say. I just kind of felt like doing a video. Um, I love my Crocs. These are like the best. These are fantastic. It's the most so comfortable, the most comfortable shoes ever. Birkenstocks are very, very comfortable too. You know what I feel like? I, I'm not, I feel like I am having a conversation with somebody that you get thrown in a room with. Like we both have to sit in the same room at the same time for like 10 minutes or whatever. And, and you know, he's trying to make conversation. Like, yeah, Birkenstocks are comfortable too. And then there's those like periods of silence in between, but you and the other person bring something up to talk about. Cleveland Indians are actually changing <laughs> their name, their name. I did find that out in the news the other day, it's true. Um, I don't think I'm gonna post this video. And then again, maybe I will, because I did say some important things about my relapse earlier, because that's actually kind of important. So why don't I just do that, keep it kind of short. Um, and you know what's kind of nice? I want to say this too. Since I've been eating healthier, since I've been like inside laying down, kind of like taking care of myself, wow, I am looking a lot better. Like my skin, you know, my skin is kind of lightened up. I, um, it, and that's great. Oh, wow. What a gift. What a gift. Thank you. Um, I guess that's it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for bearing witness to all my imperfections that I, you know, love to share with you guys because the reason is because, uh, you know, it's part of my ministry and, uh, I need to, I need to do that as a part of my ministry. In fact, you know, it's funny because at first I thought, God, the things that are preventing me from really doing effective ministry, right? Turned out to be the things that are actually making me do effective ministry or allowing me to do effective ministry. Um, so anyway, I hope everybody out there, if you're newly sober, if you, I'm sure you have your own routine, whether it be going to AA or whether it be prayer or whether it just be nothing. 
honestly. Um, just keep doing what you're doing. And if you need help, ask for help. That's an important thing. I was going to say keep on praying, but, you know, maybe you are, uh, you know, I'd like you to pray. I would. But if you don't, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to try to tell you what to do. But, um, but if you do pray, or if you're open to praying, pray, because that does help. It does help. It really does. Um... Eat when you're hungry, sleep when you're tired, take care of yourself, put your feet up, take care of your feet, pamper yourself a little bit. Now, some people call this, it's interesting because some people, like, I come from a family tradition that really does not take care of themselves. Um, that, uh, I mean, yes, I mean, yes, yeah. you know what I mean? It's kind of like, um, but you know, so so what people that don't take care of themselves, okay, uh, look at things that other people that do take care of themselves adequately as, as what they're doing is being pampering, and it's not. You know what I mean? It's just that's that's not what you're supposed to do. You know what I mean? Like, for example, like um, you know, like taking care of your feet. Like, I mean, it looks like pampering. You know what I mean? Like when you're on the street or whatever. But I mean, really, diabetics have to take care of their feet, number one. Like, I mean, it's important to take care of your feet. And especially because I was having pain in my feet and all kinds of, you know what I mean? Like my, my condition with my feet is greatly improved because I keep my feet up. And I put my feet up when I'm supposed to. Uh, being able to sleep in a bed has been incredible. You know what I mean? Again. Uh, because now the swelling that used to be in my ankles all the time, not from edema, but just from, um, from being on my feet all the time has gone down now, which is fantastic. Glad I don't have edema swelling. That would kind of freak me out a little bit. It's a sign of heart failure among other things. Um, mm. or is it a deep, wait a minute, hold on. That could be wrong, but I know that a lot of people that do have heart failure have edema in their ankles. But anyway, uh, it could be from, I think it's also, it can be from, I think medications that are used to treat heart failure can cause that as well. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, my point is though, is that, you know, uh, well, I mean, here's the thing. You know, I have some polydent in my bathroom now that I'm using to clean my retainers the way they should, because there's, you know, now you can use a tooth, you can use a, get another toothbrush and use toothpaste on your retainers and dentures, but it will, it will scratch them over time because there's a, like, you know, your teeth are like hundreds of times harder than the material used in dentures and in retainers. Uh, at least hundreds. I, now, now, this, I'll be honest, I read this on the side of the Polyten box. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I mean, I doubt this is, False, even though I, but I'm just telling you where I got the information from. And <laughs> not exactly the most unbiased source, I, I realize, but, um, but you know, that, but that really, I mean, you, I've brushed retainers before and it is, it's really not the most effective way to, I mean, to do it. it you got to be diligent about it and like, it's just, so retainer cleaners, uh, which denture cleaners are often the best way to do this. Well, it costs me some extra money. You know what I mean? Well, you know, like my mother would poo poo something like that. You know what I mean? Like, you don't need that. That's, uh, uh, you know, that's just, you know, excessive. Blah, blah, blah. But she's somebody that does not take care of herself. She's an alcoholic who, who, who just really, you know, doesn't take care of herself. So to her, that's that, you know, yeah, that's right. But you know, but the people that like know better, you know what I mean? The people that do have a standard of taking care of themselves that, that you know what I mean? That don't think that like spending money on body lotion is excessive and unnecessary. 
while they're the like you know 80 or while they're like 50 years old and they look like their their whole body makes them look like they have a fucking case of athlete's foot all over their entire goddamn body because they never use any lotion on their body like no i'm sorry i don't live like that i'm not that kind of a person i can live like that if i have to but the moment i have access to body lotion i use it you know what i mean like i mean trust me was I putting, well, I was putting lotion on my feet when I was homeless, yes, but not on a regular, not regularly, but enough to kind of, you know, uh, I did take care of my feet when I was homeless because you really got it. You really, a lot of people don't, but you really, whatever you can do, just like uh, flossing and taking care of your uh, t feet or something I did. Also because, you know what, if you don't, your feet hurt and they itch and so, so there was like a minimum level of care I definitely like extended. My feet were in better condition, I would say, than most homeless people because of that um but they still you know they were still like a long way them from where they are right now now they're like really good now they're like more like exactly what they should be they're like baby soft and and well maintained and because i cannot wear shoes all the time um my nails look better my toenails look better and stuff like that and and it just you know um so So those things are important. They're not pampering. They're just kind of taking care of your body, you know, and, and, and doing what you need to do. Um, well, I think I'm going to at uh, almost, uh, 27 minutes in here I'm gonna go ahead and upload this and uh, I'm gonna try to probably go to bed after I finish this and that's about it you know I'm gonna do a video on logging I think at some point um, as I'm able hopefully a video hopefully a morning prayer video or, or the evening prayer at the very least tomorrow I cannot I don't know what to say excuse me about um, eating eating bread seems to really um, seems to really uh, screw with me sometimes and not others. It's very strange. I don't know what the deal is. I really don't know. Um, kept me in bed for most of today and um, with fatigue with you know just feeling tired and uh, the, the pain in my feet thing I didn't get this time I've gotten it with other things it, it's kind of I can't explain myself right now so Let me go ahead and upload this. And everybody, let's just say a uh, quick prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, <clears throat> hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. And we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Oh my God, I am heartily sorry for having offended thee, and I detest all my sins because of thy just punishments, but most of all because they offend thee, my God, who is all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve with the help of thy grace to sin no more and to avoid the near occasions of sin. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, we love you. Save souls.